This is my last freaking test video. Can y'all freaking hear me or not? Nah? I'm sorry. Were you talking to me? I couldn't. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle, aka Dolce Mimi, and I'm not even gonna have this super long intro. I'm just gonna go straight into it. As you can tell by the title, we are talking about the top resources in medical school. Definitely make sure that you are subscribed. So stop what you're doing. Hit that subscribe button right there, I think. Like this video. It doesn't hurt, doesn't cost you nothing. And let's get started. So I wanna break this video down into different types of resources. We're gonna talk about the resources that made content easy, quote unquote. And then we're also gonna talk about resources that helped you get the practice questions in. When it came to micro and farm, I just wanna say and give a personal shout out to Sketchy Medical. If you guys don't know what Sketchy is, uh, I don't know what I can do to help you not live underneath a rock. They are a cartoon-based learning system and it's pretty much just giving you cues throughout the cartoon to help you remember different micro things and different farm things. When I tell you that I would have not been able to make it, Q never would have made it. I pretty much use Sketchy as my post reading for farm and micro. And if you're subscribed to me and watched my last video, you all know what post reading is. If you are new or you haven't watched that video yet, you should one, go watch that video first. And two, I will have a little snippet as to what post reading actually is. They helped me significantly to the point where I literally farm and micro were my top two best subjects on my step one exam. So definitely worth it. So I highly suggest with Sketchy printing out the um, sketches that are provided and labeling them yourself. And then afterwards, you kind of just close your eyes and think about the sketch overall and try to remember all the things that you were taught. And I promise you, like, I mean, it doesn't work for everybody. I'm not gonna say I promise you before someone sues me, but if you are a visual learner or if you're struggling with micro and farm, please try Sketchy. I'm not even, I'm not getting paid for this. I'm not an ambassador for them. I don't even got a discount code for y'all. <laughs> I'm just saying this from true facts. They have helped me tremendously. My second resource is going to be Boards and Beyond. Now, uh, Dr. Ryan, if you are watching this video, I just want to uh, tell you. I still love you. I genuinely love you. Um, I know we haven't met um, and I know you probably have a wife and kids, but I just want to let you know that I love you. Dr. Ryan's videos are the absolute best. And I'm not just saying that just to say like Dr. Ryan helped me through my first two years. When I tell you he breaks things down to layman terms, if you're having a really hard time just understanding concepts as a whole, check out his videos. You could listen to them at like two speed. If you're in medical school, you probably know how to listen to videos on two speed, especially if you're struggling with cardio. He's a cardiologist, so you know his content is going to be on point for that particular subject. He literally has modules of every subject in medicine. He goes through every section of first aid and he also gives you uh, first aid guidelines um, to help you read along pretty much. My third resource and probably should have been my first resource but we've already talked about it in my first video. My third resource would obviously be your first aid. First aid is your Bible through medical school. If you are an incoming M1, definitely go out to Amazon and buy yourself a first aid. If you are a medical student and don't have first aid, once again, I don't know what rock you've been living under, but first aid is essential for all of your medical school career. And even afterwards, like you're still gonna use it as you are a resident. I still see attendings using their first aid. So definitely, go out and pick up your first aid. My fourth resource would be Pathoma. 
Pathoma is a, a video resource that primarily looks at pathology. Dr. Setar is also another person that I just love. He helped me throughout my all of medical school. Pretty much owe Dr. Ryan, Dr. Satar, and Sketchy my medical degree by the time I graduate. Pathoma really goes in depth with each organ system, the different pathologies that come about. Dr. Sadar does a really good job of breaking things down, connecting things, and I think it's really important to be able to connect pathologies between different systems, and he does a really good job of that. My fifth make content easy resource is osmosis. Like I said in the beginning, I am a visual learner, so I need simple cartoons or just simple illustrations that help me break down big topics that I really don't understand. And Osmosis does a great job of this. They have a YouTube channel where they put out free videos and then obviously they have their paid subscriptions. I loved Osmosis because their videos don't really run over probably 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. The illustrators do a really good job of making them these little like cute cartoons and making things very simple um, for you to understand. If you haven't noticed the keyword in this video is going to be simple. I am, I need things down to the basics, okay? Like, I know I may be in medical school, but that don't mean that I got all the knowledge in the world, okay? I'm, I need some help, like, help me. Help me, help me. <laughs> medical school can be tough, it can be cumbersome, and some of those medical words I still don't understand to this day, and I probably will never really completely understand them. So I need someone to, Take it down three notches to kindergarten level. My sixth resource, I think we're on six. I can't remember, I'm gonna stop naming them. Y'all gonna see the numbers on the side. BRS stands for Board Review Series. Um, and I used this textbook specifically for physiology. I think it did a really good job of um, creating these short, simple, <laughs> pages that went through the very big, deep concepts of physiology and just quick facts. I'm all about quick facts, quick maths. Two plus two is four, minus one, that's three quick maths. <laughs> so if you can condense this huge lecture into two pages, once again, if you had watched my first video, you know that that's what I normally do anyway. Having this textbook just break down things, show you the equations that you need to know for each organ and system when it came to physiology was very helpful. Those were my top resources for making content easy. Now we're gonna move on to the top resources that I used for questions. End all, be all, you will use it all throughout your dedicated for step one, you world. I have a love-hate relationship with this question bank. Um, let's just say if you were was a person, I probably would have fought them by now. Oh shit, what is that? Who you fight? And they probably would have won. You world be snatching your edges, you be snatching you by the wig. Like, yeah, I got it. Yeah, bitch, what the fuck? Um, so it's a question bank that does more good than harm, even though it hurts to do these questions because they can be hard, it can be outrageous sometimes. They honestly help you understand the content that you're learning so much more. If you're going through dedicated for USMLE step one, you should be using UWorld as your first resource anyway. But UWorld is, I think, your go-to for um, question banks outside of whatever your school provides or outside of your textbook questions. Um, do you have to start UWorld day one? No, I don't think so. I think maybe becoming a little bit accustomed to how UWorld asks questions early on can definitely help you in your dedicated study because by the time you get to dedicated you will probably have seen all those questions god only knows how many times so the next couple resources i'll say that i've used them sparingly throughout the, my medical school i always found that the questions in my textbooks or the questions that were provided by my professors helped me get through my first two years because my tests were based on school material um, so the first one being USMLE RX, it is another QBank, it has several thousands of questions and it's partnered with First Aid. The reason I liked this resource, you could literally answer a question and it'll tell you where to find it in your First Aid book. I wasn't the biggest fan of this QBank just because I felt like some of the questions were worded weird compared to UWorld, but it's extra practice nonetheless, so um, I think it's 
always great to have multiple options whenever you have finished one QBank. Another question resource would be Firecracker. It's an app that not only provides questions, quizzes, and practice exams that you could do, but this app also lets you go through note cards from different subjects. So it's another way of solidifying content as well as getting you some questions. My last question resource that I will talk about is a Gray's Anatomy um, textbook, question textbook. Obviously this is specific for anatomy. It has hundreds of questions that will literally go through the anatomy systems and help you solidify all those little anatomy details that you tend to forget. It helped me significantly through anatomy and I would recommend it to anybody. And that's pretty much it for the question resources. I also want to point out that um, a lot of med students use a app called Anki. And Anki is a note card based app where you can either download decks that people have already pre-made or you can make your own. So the reason why students enjoy Anki is because the note cards allow you to, it's pretty much timed repetition. You will go a couple days without seeing a card and then it will automatically pop up and you'll have to answer it again. So I don't know if I'm really explaining this all that well. I know there's ample amount of videos out there on Anki, so definitely YouTube them and check out this resource because I think it can be helpful for a lot of students and it is helpful for a lot of students. But I'm just not well versed in Anki language to really tell you guys. It's pretty much based on the science of timed repetition and like I've always harped, repetition in medical school is something that's very vital to understanding and learning all of the material that is thrown at us. And so an app that helps you with that is definitely a go. All right guys, so that is my consolidated quick review of resources that I use, whether it's for making content easy or for practice questions. I hope this video was helpful. It's kind of spur of the moment. I didn't plan it thoroughly, flesh it out thoroughly as I had wished to, but I wanted to push out some content for y'all because I know I've been saying I was supposed to record this a long time ago. But uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed. My next video will probably be my step one studying schedule. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. Share, tell your mama and them, tell your uncle and them, or Bodhi and all them to watch my video. And until next time, y'all, peace.